Hello, everybody, and well, welcome to the WCT Global Webinar on the Wines of Catalonia. Feel free to stay. Uh, feel free to say hi in the chat and tell us where you are from, and maybe if you are enjoying some wine from this fantastic region right now. Let me tell you some things about me while we wait for more people to join the webinar. I am David Martin, and I work for the Wine and Spirit Education Trust as the Business Development Manager for the EMEA region. The WCT is the world's leading provider of qualifications in wine, spirits, and sake. And we have an extensive network of providers of around 800 approved program providers. Uh, we are in over 80 countries, and you can find your nearest provider on our World to Study page in the wctglobal.com. Just a quick reminder, uh, this webinar is being recorded and will be available via the Global Event Hubs on YouTube later on today. And if you have any questions, we will have some time at the end to answer them. Please put them on the Q&A box and we will try to answer as many of them as possible. And now let me introduce you Alba Balsells. Alba is the general director of the Catalan Institute of Vine and Wine in Cabin uh, since 2011, uh, 2021. Her background is in political sciences and administration, and she holds a master's degree in participation and local politics from the Universidad Autónoma de Barcelona. She also has several wine qualifications, and I am glad to say that one of them is a WCT qualification. Mm -hmm. She regularly participates in wine tasting projects and international competitions, including prestigious concourse, uh, including the prestigious Concourse Mondial de Bruxelles and the Extreme Spirits International Contest. Alba has been instrumental in the current partnership between the INCABI and the WCT. The INCABI is now a corporate partner of the WCT, and I am sure that this relationship will help us to learn more about the wines and regions of Catalonia and the work the INCABI does to promote them. Alba, welcome and thank you for being with us today. Thank you, David. Good afternoon, via WCT peers. Today, I feel deeply honored to address you as the director of INCABI, the Catalan Institute of Vine and Wine, on this special occasion. I want to express my sincerest gratitude to each of you for joining us in this unique webinar, where we embark on a fascinating journey to discover not only 10, but a multitude of captivating facets about Catalonia's illustrious wine industry, curated by none other than the distinguished sommelier Ferran Centelles. I want to emphasize the profound importance of the alliance we are celebrating today, the collaboration between INCAVI and the Wine and Spirit Education Trust. It represents a fundamental milestone in our ongoing mission to promote and share the rich and diverse heritage of Catalan wines with an international audience. Thus, I am proud to announce that as the vineyard and wine public institution of the government of Catalonia, we have formalized an alliance that we have carefully nurtured over the past year. This collaboration underscores our unwavering commitment to the growth and development of our wine industry. Let me tell you about these four initiatives. First one, Catalonia, a hub for wine. Catalonia is not just a geographical region, it is a vibrant core where history, culture, and innovation harmoniously converge. Our wines tell stories that span generations. Second, diverse terrace and wine tourists. In Catalonia, we may be small in size, but our territory is surprisingly rich and diversity. From the rugged Pyrenees to the picturesque Mediterranean coast, our terrace 
offer an impressive variety of soils and microclimates, making Catalonia a paradise of grape diversity, with 12 designations of origin. To discover this diversity, the best way is to visit us. That's why in recent years, wine tours has experienced a remarkable boom. Catalonia invites you to explore not only its wines, but also the immersive wine tourist experiences that accompany them. It's a journey of a senses and a celebration of our rich wine culture. Third, the unique role of Incavi in this framework of wealth, diversity, and wine-making talents, Incavi, the Catalan Institute of Vine and Wine, holds a unique and essential position in the world of viticulture. For decades, we have been custodians of tradition and innovation, diligently preserving our wine heritage and promoting cutting-edge research. Incavi has been at the forefront of addressing the major challenge facing the global wine industry. We are active in initiatives related to digitalization, adaptation to climate change, preservation of mountain vineyards, increased consumer engagement, and the advancement of international education, including our prestigious collaboration with WSCT. Our commitment to research and development extends to projects focused on adapting to climate change, regenerative viticulture, and addressing the evolving demands of consumers for healthier and more sustainable wines. We believe in fostering innovation while respecting our centuries-old traditions. And for Horizon in Cavi 2025, at the heart of our vision lies the Horizon in Cavi 2025 strategic plan, a transformative initiative launched in 2022. This plan is not just a roadmap, it is a commitment to shape the future of Catalan wine. It addresses the most urgent challenges facing our industry and offers a plan to seize new opportunities. One of our most cherished missions is to showcase indigenous, traditional, and recovered grape varieties. These unique varieties are not only part of our heritage, but are the very soul of Catalan wines, and doing them with a distinctive character that sets them apart. As the shadow of climate change looms over us, Incavi is not a passive observer. We are actively engaged in pioneering research and initiatives to adapt our viticulture and wine-making practices to these evolving conditions. Sustainability is not a buzzword, it is a solemn commitment we make to future generations. And so that everyone can learn who we are and what we do, we have recently launched the website of Catalan Wines. It is more than a digital platform. It is a virtual treasure inviting wine lovers and professionals to delve deep into our local grape varieties, distinct wine regions, cultural nuances, and three thousand years of wine history and traditions. What are the strengths of Catalan wines? Well, our belief is simple and profound. The strengths of Catalan wines lie in their exceptional quality, the variety of native grapes varieties, the stunning landscapes that nourish them, and the rich cultural heritage that resonates through each bottle. These factors collectively positioned Catalan wines as not just distinctive, but truly exceptional. What lies in store for Catalan wines? As we look to the future, we anticipate an evolution in our grape varietals, vineyards locations, and viticulture and wine making techniques. Our focus embraces regenerative viticulture, explores new and promising terrace, and responds to the ch changing preferences of consumers for healthier and more sustainable wines. In conclusion, the future of Catalan wines is nothing short of promising and innovative.
we are unwavering in our commitment to preserve our cherished heritage while embracing change, sustainability, and excellence. Together, hand in hand, as a vineyard and wine public institution of the government of Catalonia and our dedicated partners, we are preparated to write a vibrant and prosperous future for Catalan wines. The alliance between Incavi and Winset that brings us together today symbolizes our collective dedication to sharing the story of Catalan wine with the world. It marks the beginning of an exciting expedition, a journey that will unveil the intricacies of Catalan wine, its rich history and its limitless potential for the future. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to the discussions, collaborations, and partnerships that will undoubtedly propel our industry to new heights. Cheers to the radiant future of Catalan wine, and we hope to see you in Barcelona very soon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alba. Very interesting, and I hope that our relationship will go for a very long time and we can learn more about your work there in Catalonia. So now let me introduce Ferran Centelles. Uh, Ferran is, among many other things, is the wine director of El Bulli Foundation, but he was also awarded Best Sommelier in Spain in 2006, the National Gastronomy Award in 2011, he was WCT Outstanding Alumni Award in 2019. He teaches wine in Spain, Chile, and Colombia. And when he's not teaching, he still finds time to judge at international competitions such as the Canter World Wine. And he is also the wine specialist for chancesrobinson.com. Ferran, you even had time to publish three wine books. I, that is impressive. I have to say, where do you get all that time? <laughs> so thank you very much for being with us today. And I just pass it to you. I'm looking forward to hear your presentation and to learn more about this fascinating region. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. I just I just learned that you are David Martin and, and not David Martin, as I... <laughs> <laughs> Well, being, being from Madrid, you know, you have okay. to be David Martin yeah. more than David. That's very really cool. That's very really cool. Excellent. Well, it's a pleasure to be here with you and, and uh, share this uh, uh, conversation and a little bit of it, like up to date information about, about Catalonian uh, uh, wines. Super happy. Uh, well, David has been through that already, but uh, uh, you should also know that. Uh, I was also a dedicated uh, diploma student, and I'm sure many of you that are following uh, this conversation, you are also going through the, the diplomas. So uh, it's not an easy, uh, it's not an easy um, challenge. But uh, from here, from Barcelona, all the support to all you that you are going through through this very very important challenge. So best best luck for the for the students. Enjoy enjoy the way. Uh, just to make you feel you better, uh, it took me like for me five years to pass the diploma, so it's not easy, and I totally understand uh, uh, you and, and support you. So yeah, my best wishes for you all. And if you are at level two or three, it's it's the same. Uh, level three, it's becoming even more difficult. So that we'll we'll go through through the presentation, and then ta -na -na -na, we do have a contest, a, a surprise contest uh, for you all. Uh, and we'll try to to do it uh, together through using internet through 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 the website, and it will be very very fun. Uh, so that will be our like last ten minutes of of the conversation. So like this, we can also uh, going through the information again uh, on a very uh, fun uh, fun way, uh, and then after the world Catalan wine contest will also have some uh, questions and, and answer time so that's more or less the, the the program we have for today and starting by numbers oh that's a yeah, boring time for you guys because numbers I know sometimes that are a bit boring but they help us to understand what is all about uh, in Catalonia so Catalonia will have like 750 uh, different wineries, wine uh, wine cellars, and twelve uh, appellations. Uh, for me, all these twelve appellations, we'll see that later. They have, or they make totally sense. 
but for some of you, they maybe look like a lot or or few. I I don't know, but we'll go through, through them, and and you will see why these twelve appellations are so important and so diverse, so different between each other. So eight thousand five hundred viticulturists or vine growers, uh, lots of uh, as Alba was saying, uh, wine tourism experiences. Also, wine tourism is, is today. Uh, a very important activity in in Catalonia and around sixty thousand hectares. Okay, sixty thousand hectares, guys. For the the ones that are studying, talking about hectares is boring. Three thousand hectares, five thousand hectares, ten thousand hectares, fifteen, whatever. But if if you get to the point and if you start to compare uh, using this information, then then suddenly it becomes very, very, very funny. Uh, let me put it that, that way. So Catalonia is nearly uh, the same size in terms of, of uh, vine hectares uh, or vineyards, uh, more or less the same like or as Burgundy, okay? Uh, and more or less the same like uh, Rioja or it's the half of Bordeaux. So if you look it to, to this way, then it becomes very fun. And it's not if you just get numbers and remember numbers, it's boring. But if you compare with other regions, so we can say that uh, Catalonia has already something very in common or something in common with Burgundy, which is the size. <laughs> oh, that's a joke. Okay. okay. And then 350 uh, million bottles per, uh, per year. That's 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 a lot. You should know for the ones that they are not in, in Europe, that they are they are abroad, that we are living a decrease of, of, of consumption here in, in Europe, that there are less and less people working in the wine and business. But however, on the contrary, the value of the wines is increasing. So uh, although there are less people working and you know the European community is, is trying to balance the, the, the production and, and trying to balance the primary sector, uh, the value of, of the wines increases. And especially in Catalonia, we are very happy to see an, an increase of, of the prices and, and the value of our of our wine. That's also thank you to, to wine tourism, thank you to uh, gastronomy, to, to restaurants, to, to sommelier, but also to our wineries and our uh, bank growers that are making better and better wine and increasing the, the, the value. So I'm quite happy about, about that. So here you have more or less uh, the, the geography of our Catalan uh, country. Uh, it's quite diverse. Uh, it's difficult for me to, to uh, do like a, something which is very generic uh, because it's it's quite diverse. And, and uh, well, Catalonia was created when when the, the European plate uh, and the Iberian plate, they, they, they collision together, okay? So that that made uh, the Pyrenees, you see here up to the north uh, to, to appear. That's Pyrenees, it's a huge mountain that it just shelters from the influence of the Atlantic. Uh, and then it it actually makes Catalan, Catalonia or the majority of Catalonia to be a, a Mediterranean uh, country. It's very diverse. Uh, imagine you, you, you take your car and you, uh, you see different areas uh, within Catalonia. You get to the mountain and, and to the forest, uh, like an, an European steep forest, but then uh, you get to the Mediterranean area with other very much different kind of forests with more acorns and more cork trees. Uh, and then you go inland and you get all this typical uh, scrubland landscape with, with uh, aromatic herbs. So it's it's very diverse and it's difficult for me to do like a, a, a generic or very generic uh, uh, picture. But more or less, we can say that uh, let's take a look to 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 these other uh, weather maps. More or less, we can say that we have to the north. You see all the all the Pyrenees uh, area, so that could be like a high high sorry high mountains influence. Okay, then to the coast we'll have all this kind of Mediterranean uh, climate with um, maritime influences. Yeah, and then slightly. In inland, the, the interior area where we have also Mediterranean climate, uh, but probably with with um, more uh, uh, greater 
continentality, yeah. So so the, the nights are cooler and, and the days are kind of hotter and more more warm. It's still it's still Mediterranean uh, climate, but less uh, a bit more extreme on on the temperature differences compared to the one that we have here in in the coast and the, the Mediterranean coast. You see also here uh, the the map which is down to your left. These are the 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 rains as you see the north and the mountain and the north and the coast is kind of more rainy as as we go in line it uh, it's drier yeah so you see all the costes del segre area will go will go through that eh? and on all the inland area kind of more more dry uh also we have uh, don't think in, uh, uh don't think in catalonia as being like just uh uh, place of sun and, and 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 beaches. No, no, no. It's it's more about mountains, actually, sun and beach and and you know uh, and actually we have like six thousand hectares more or less that we can consider like heroic viticulture or, or that heroic viticulture is is actually um, done there. So it's quite extreme. And and if we go far to the north, it gets even more extreme. Yeah? So don't think. Uh, Catalonia as being something which is kind of uh, really flat and and yeah no no it's I would say a lot of our uh, area yeah or it's it's quite extreme in terms of landscape and that makes also viticulture to be a bit a bit uh, difficult probably the the flat area it's the one here that it's mentioned as depression central yeah so the the the, the main central uh, plain but all the rest we have seen and you can see there are there are mountains they can be coastal mountains or more kind of high mountains to to the north but yeah as, as you see uh, the the landscape it's it's a bit extreme okay so this yeah. is yeah more or less it so uh, as i was saying we have uh, 12 different uh, pdo or denominaciones de origen let me say that in catalan denominaciones de origen okay uh, and there are today uh, 12 that that you will see they they have or they will totally make sense i have tried to just to synthesize to to really do a summary of what i think it's important on each appellation right? because we can of course there are there are many different producers that they produce different wines but also trying to follow uh, wct rules and 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 you should know that uh, wct wct sorry tries to focus on what is really important and and and, and tries to 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 settle that and to set uh, the, the the levels of, of of knowledge i have also tried to to do so yeah, so so from from yeah so you have here a beautiful map that that you can yeah that you can see all the all the appellations but i have tried to focus on what really is important in each of these uh, appellations and yeah, so you will see for me, uh, this is today very important for Pansa Blanca. Pansa Blanca, it's our Charello. Charello, it's a grape that really keeps, uh, white grape that really keeps very well. Uh, it's very rich on, on polyphenols, and that makes this grape to, to be able to age in a, in a beautiful manner. So all the the so all, all the Pansa Blanca that they are produced in, in uh, granitic soils, they are for me the most interesting wine produced in Aleja. There are, of course, Garnacha and Pica Poll also planted there, but nothing as exciting as Panza Blanca, both in steel wine, but also a sparkling wine of Cava. It's produced there. Aleja, it's a tiny, tiny appellation. And actually, it's just 15 minutes driving, well, depending on traffic, because, you know, well, today. No, today it's traffic. Yeah? Today, today would be like thirty minutes or so. But normally, with fifteen minutes, you can be in in from Barcelona. You can be in the in the heart of of Aleja wine region, which is actually the village called uh, Aleja. Panza Blanca, super interesting, long age, long living uh, white wines, very very cool. Then we have uh, Empordà. 
further uh, north, just next to next to the the French uh, uh, border. <clears throat> and actually, I I, I said that uh, the Pyrenees, the, the, the well, it's a, it's a huge huge mountain, and and actually that it it really mark the difference between France and and Spain, yeah, culturally and also yeah in 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 many 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 senses. But there are two areas. Uh, there are two areas where uh, the mountains are not as extreme, like in the in the central area of the Pyrenees. One is in uh, towards uh, Catalonia, and the other one is towards the the Basque uh, country. And well, guys, sorry to say so, but uh, I need to share a secret. Uh, that's that's very important, and and it's not about Catalonia, but not that we're talking about the Pyrenees. Uh, we were doing some 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 research here at at uh, uh, Foundation. And we actually find out that Cabernet Sauvignon, be careful, eh? Cabernet Sauvignon might might be uh, a grape variety that was kind of uh, breed uh, and it might have appeared in the Basque country first and later on moved to uh, Bordeaux. But that's uh, something we are still uh, researching. So. Somehow, yeah, at, at least the ancestors of Cabernet Sauvignon, they are Spanish. Eh? So don't think uh, as Cabernet Sauvignon as being a French grape anymore. <laughs> Sorry, if there are some French guys uh, uh, listening to me, don't kill me. Eh? But that's something we are researching. Uh, sorry, sorry. And coming back to uh, to Emporda, but it's very exciting, eh, the Cabernet thing. It's very exciting. Uh, coming back to Emporda, uh, old vines of Garnacha and, and Cariñena. And I would say... Uh, with permission of Priorat, of course, that in Empordal, it's the it's the region in Catalonia that we can find the oldest uh, vines from Garnacha and Cariñena, and almost yeah, half half of the vineyards planted there. It's more than thirty years and more than fifty years, and and seven percent actually it's more than eighty years or something. It's crazy. It's crazy, and it's very close in terms of, of uh, vineyards, in terms of philosophy, and even the wines, they are very close to the wines from, from Roussillon and, and Languedoc, because there is this connection, yeah, the Pyrenees, they are not in there, and, and there's this connection, cultural connection also with Southern France. Then Pla del Bages, very, very exciting things in Pla del Bages, uh, local grape varieties such as Picapol Blanc and Picapol Negra, delicate, subtle wines. Then uh, Mando, that it could be like our kind of trousseau, if you allow me to put it this way, Mando and trousseau with a bit rustic uh, tannins, but keeping a beautiful freshness. Also, Sumol, which is a bibit and very uh, acidic and refreshing red grape variety, and also international grape varieties that, well, uh, it's not just in Catalonia, I would say around Spain in the 19th. Uh, international grape varieties such as Cabernet, Merlot, well, Cabernet, no, which is Cabernet is half Spanish, but other international grape varieties such as Merlot and Shira, uh, they were uh, planted uh, here too. Uh, Costes del Segre, Costes del Segre, it's a region that that I, I really like. Sometimes it's difficult to explain, but I would say the southern area of Costes del Segre, which is, there are five sub, sub regions in Costes del Segre, so the southern area of Costes del Segre, which are the lower areas um, are based on, on garnacha, or we are producing beautiful garnachas, not far away in concentration and not far away in, in, in the style compared to, to the ones in, in Priorat, not, not so far away. But also we have beautiful Chardonnay and other international grape varieties as we go far to the north, uh, to, to the north. This is the, probably a very, or, or the most, inner inland uh, wine region uh, in, in Catalonia, quite very, very, very dry. And remember, the, 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 if we go inland, then the, the climate and the weather, it becomes kind of drier or more dry. Okay. And, but also another very promising region in the mountains uh, of Costes del Segre, where we're producing high altitude wines. Yeah. Remember the name, home of Trepat. Trepat is the Catalan answer. Okay, I put it that uh, in, in big, big capital letters. Uh, Trepat is the Catalan answer 
to Pinot Mar. Okay, so just so now we have two things in common with Burgundy. One is the, the the size of of the whole country. The second is that we have a great variety that it's also be, been able to produce very delicate and subtle uh, and and beautiful wines. I'm I'm quite impressed. I was recently visiting the the region, and it's it's very impressive the work they have been developing. Just they started to produce red wines from Trepat in 2004, but they are beautiful, beautifully made. Then we have Cava, and also Corpinat, see, Corpinat and, and Cava and also uh, Classic Penedès are the three uh, main appellations uh, for uh, quality sparkling wine in, in Catalonia. We'll be, through, we'll be coming back to Cava in, in a minute or so. And then Tarragona, don't forget about Tarragona, please. Beautiful rancio wine, uh, oxidative, like, yeah, uh, sol, soli serena. It's, it, it's a home of, of very, very interesting wines. Unfortunately, sweet wines, they're kind of losing a bit of, of, of prestige or at least demand uh, in, in the global market, but not in restaurants. Yeah, here in, 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 in restaurants, me is working as a as a sommelier. These are wines that I really, really love. They are very unique uh, and very deep. Uh, fortification is also, uh, adding alcohol is also very important. Yeah, and uh, a, rising, a rising promise uh, with Macabeo. So yeah, now quite, quite a few interesting Macabeo wines in, in Tarragona. And then Priorat. No need to, to talk a lot about the dramatic uh, Priorat uh, wine region, really sheltered uh, thanks to, to the mountain uh, from, from the sea influences. Very old Garnachas and Carignanas, uh, very kind of this uh, slate, extremely poor soils. Uh, uh, I can just summarize the Priorat harvest with one word, which will be Priorat is tiring no because you see this very steep slope uh, you actually need to really look uh, to to the to the vineyards and to the plant to find a very small hole of a bunch is very 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 dramatic but it's it's crazy but then everything is reflected on the deep and tasty flavor profile of of the wines priorat uh then Keeping on that, Monsan is Monsan half price priorat. Well, actually, uh, Monsan it's you you find a bit less licorella in in Monsan and and more uh, clay based soils, but quite interesting wines at a very very reasonable prices. I love Monsans. I serve a lot of Monsan, and it's great for for listing and by the glass wine. And also, there is a kind of a, a trend. In, produ in producing super top Monsan. So today there are like three or four wineries that are producing Monsan as an exp expensive and, and as good as, as Priorat uh, with a very stylistic, with an stylistic revolution uh, regarding Garnacha. Light and, and delicate Garnachas produced in, in Monsan. Then Terralta, Terralta is the homeland of uh, Garnacha Blanca. So one third of the whole Garnacha Blanca planted in the whole planet, so the whole big thing of, uh, of the global picture of uh, white Garnacha, one third of the production is in Terra Alta. It's amazing, it's crazy if you think it that, 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 that way. Uh, a beautiful grape, a grape that sometimes when it age, it, it develops up to the end. So like um, uh, reasoning uh, flavors, uh, guys, and for 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 you that you are doing WCT, and that we need to discuss that with with uh, David also, uh, Garnacha in in terms of total acidity is not as low as we normally think or normally read or normally study when we go through through the courses. Maybe the perception and the palate uh, it might look a bit like low in acidity but not when you get the, the results from from the the lab the, the actually sometimes garnacha has higher acidity than, than tempranillo uh, so we need actually to to review this this information so garnacha is not as low in acidity as we normally think in penedes so 35000 hectares of the total of 60000 more or less are in penedes so half of catalonia is penedes 
you know a lot of things about Penedès, you know Charello, you know the Sumol, we have already talked about it, and also this super trendy and lovely Malvasia de Chiches, which we call the Riesling of the Mediterranean. Eh? Riesling of the Mediterranean, that's the sentence that, that we like to to call uh, Malvasia de Chiches, super high in acidity, flavorful, aromatic, floral, it's just beautiful, and we are recovering this grape variety. So now 50 hectares in total in, in the whole country. Super, super interesting. And a revolution in terms of, of, um, of terroir. Crazy, guys. If you go to, to the Appellation uh, Penedes website, you will see that they have developed different sub, sub regions, but in a very, very deep uh, uh, research, like I think like 15 or, or I think some regions, super interesting. I totally recommend you go to uh, Denominación de Origen Penedes website. And finally, our, our all in appellation uh, Catalonia that we use to blend wines yeah, and, and and for regions that they don't have any they can also go to the Denominación de Origen Catalonia. I just want to share that that it's uh, it's uh, uh, a very personal opinion. So, if if we will have to kind of classify the the Catalan grape varieties uh, in terms of aroma intensity and body, okay, uh, don't kill me. I know depending on how you produce the wine, the wine making techniques that you can kind of drive the wine uh, towards the, the style you uh, you want. So please, please don't kill me. But that helps me to explain a bit. Uh, the, the stylistic profile of each uh, is so then the for me the the more intense and flavorful grapes are Muscat and Malvasia and and, and Perellada it's probably the less uh, intense and flavorful of, of those grape varieties I don't know if you see how 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 it works and then Giro sorry Giro it's from Mallorca but I'm crazy about this grape variety Giro Ross I just love that it it. It's like a Bionier or something like that. Super interesting, Mediterranean, high alcohol, low acidity, but it's it's lovely. Sorry to talk with uh, uh, about Mallorca now, but guys, they are, they are just recovering this great variety and it's fascinating. Let me repeat that. Giro is fascinating, fascinating uh, white grape variety produced in, in Mallorca. Giro Ross, look, look, look to it, yeah, because it, it's really worth it. And that would be the 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 reds. So, so the the for me the more delicate and red wines in and and probably refreshing red wines in Catalonia are today produced from Trepat, Sumol, and Mando. And then the the more intense are Garnacha, Cariñena, and uh, Monastrey or Garrut, which is a Catalan name. And then you see Ul de Llebre. I put here five in Ul de Llebre. You see it here in the middle. Eh? Five body and five uh, intensity. This is because I don't know where to put uh, Tempranillo because it's crazy. Depending on this, this is yeah a great variety that that it's very really depending on on the winemaker uh, philosophy. So I just go five and five because I don't want to to be in a we say meterme en un jardín in Spanish, which I don't want to be in a garden, you know. And uh, so five and five, it's uh, a good result for me. Then. San and now very good news. Also, we have created this be the Finca Qualificada, which that would be our Grand Group Grand Cru Classe. So that's uh, an award uh, given by the government by by Incavi to some really top wines. And you have you have here the the be the Finca Qualificada uh, concept. Uh, it's a, a a wine top wine that's been in the market for for a while. Uh, very highly regarded. It needs to to be like from a single uh, state, from a specific plot. Uh, super interesting. Be the finca qualificada, uh, and that's a wine category that I'm sure we'll see more and more. Uh, with I hope more wines and very prestigious uh, classification. So these are our Grand Cru Classe wines in Catalonia. We can call them be the Finca Qualificada. You see here the guys and the total of 14 beans the Finca Qualificada that they are today in the market. So Cros Mogador, Texa, Jean Leon in, 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 in four different uh, wines. Abadal, Arnau Ullés, Mas de la Rosa, de Vallac, Clos Punta, Coma Blanca, Edetaria, uh, Eduardo Massana Noia, Viñas Olivardot, Family, guys, wine students from uh, the These fourteen names they are very important with our our country, and they are all 
uh, within this Bidefinca qualificada concept. Then, ancient heritage, we are very happy uh, and very proud of our Iberian origin. Uh, and actually, this is a picture down here. We, we have developed that at the Woody Foundation. So you see the picture down there. This is a, a picture uh, from Terra Alta, see, uh, El Coll del, uh, del Moro. Uh, so that's the third uh, century, uh, more or less. And this is a, a very old lagar. So you see here the, the lagar as we can find it uh, today. These are Iberian uh, remainings from Terra Alta. And uh, to, to the left, more or less, how we imagine they were producing wine at, at that time. Uh, and of course, the Phoenicians, they were very important because they, they brought us all the knowledge and, and also uh, the, the, the Romans uh, and the ancient Romans, they were also very important. But uh, we kind of feel here, we have a uh, like feeling within within the... the, the that, that we really feel like Iberians, no? That, that our our ancestors they were they were Iberians, and of course they had the, the influence. But this is the settings here; they are totally hundred uh, percent Iberian, and you have many of them in uh, different wine regions of Catalonia with seeds, grape seeds, and also uh, wine making, very old wine making facilities. Our Catalan uh, and modernist uh, architecture, we have actually. 18, 18 uh, cathedral wineries, like, like our cathedral wineries. These are uh, modernist wineries through all the Catalan, uh, uh, especially to the south of, of Catalonia. I'm sure you are aware about this uh, architectural, uh, stylistic uh, movement named uh, Modernisme, uh, Modernism. Uh, but also not, not just not just architectural uh, architects, uh, not, not just buildings, but also art and also paintings and all this stuff uh, that was after the industrialization of of the country. Uh, and uh, and you see, uh, if if you look to the pictures, all the architecture is very sumptuous, uh, very very delicate. Uh, the the use of iron was very also very important, and it's just impressive. Is somehow. You visit sometimes Catalonia. You need at least to visit one of those cathedrals. Some of them they are still in in use. Most of them they were built uh, as a cooperatives because co co cooperatives they were very important uh, at the, the half of, of beginning and, and half of the 20th century. And this is something that we uh, love and feel proud of our uh, wine cathedrals. Call it this way, and then. Lots of uh, newcomers in terms of great variety. You have here Gonfaus, uh, these are new discoveries by uh, La Familia Torre. You see here the, the map of all the varieties they've been trying to, to research. Also in Cavi, it's uh, promoting so our uh, regulatory body, uh, governmental body, it's also trying to find new uh grape, grape varieties that's super super interesting uh, for instance another one called trubat trubat it's a lovely super delicate uh, uh grape uh that it's among my, my favorites that in costa del segra that's something that we are now uh, using uh, a lot and, and very kind of proud and, and hopefully that will become a more important grape in in the Russian future also as i said pirene uh, which is from the Pyrenees, and remember the Pyrenees, as high as you go, the, the radiation, the altitude brings... Uh, uh, well, no, I, I'm, another very important point for you that you are studying, you normally can read that, okay, if you go very up into the mountains and very high in altitude, then the skin goes thicker, okay? This is false, eh? No, 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 no. You get more intensity and... and uh, 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 more polyphenols, but it doesn't mean that the, the, the skin is thicker. You get it or not? So uh, it's it's like when you go ski, yeah, and, and you can, when you go to the ski, the, 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 somehow you can be easily burned yeah, because of, of the sun, and, and then your skin becomes kind of more brown. Right? It's the same with, with grape varieties. We don't develop a thicker skin. It just changes the color. So it's the same with, with uh, grape varieties. So stop 
reading and stop saying that grapes they become the skins they become thicker if you go up to the to the to the altitude to the high mountains uh, uh, vineyards it doesn't work that way um, and then innovation uh, tradition we have already talked about uh, vinos and rancios but also there are people like this crazy guy at Castel de Encus, uh, which are recovering old stones to do the fermentation, concrete tanks uh, everywhere. So I don't know, but I feel like most of, of the uh, most of the winemakers, they kind of are tired of using uh, stainless steel. I don't know if that happens also in, in your regions, but here in Catalonia, you kind of feel that that uh, that way also. Uh, if you use concrete on, on other mm, kind of, of materials, uh, then you need less power and uh, 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 you need less less cold yeah, and uh, it's kind of more respectful with, with, with sustainability. Okay. I don't know. I see uh, uh, a thumbs up here in, in, in my screen. So that means that probably it's the same situation in, in your country. Yeah. And finally, very happily, to announce that Cava is also doing his his own revolution. Yeah, uh, you see here all this uh, geographical demarcation that Cava is now promoting. Uh, of course, that was quite tough. I don't know if you are aware of of uh, Cava producers leaving the appellation and and starting this Corpinat uh, association that would be more or less the same concept and and the same brand as the BDP in, in, in Germany, more or less the, uh, the same. But now today, Cava has answered. Uh, we have a, a new Cava uh, classification and a new Cava geographical uh, demarcation, as you see here in, in the screen. And that's something that we have developed. That's good news, uh, yeah, fresh news from, from all you. This is kind of something that we have developed together with the Consejo Regulador of the Appellations. Uh, within Comtats de Barcelona, which is the historical area in Catalonia and the historical area for Cava production, and more or less Balzano y Foix, that's the historical uh, heart of of, uh, of Penedès, Serra de Mar, it's uh, uh, Alella uh, region, Conca de Gallà could be Tarragona, Serra de Prades would be Conca de Barberà area, and Pla de Ponent, that's Costes del Segre area, more or less. Yeah, but these are the names of the sub sub regions uh, for Cava within Comtats de Barcelona, and more or less you see here uh, the style of Cava that they are now based and they are now promoting. Uh, so Serra de Mar, of course, Pansa Blanca and Chardonnay, Conca del Gallà, uh, and Tarragona, as we said, Macabeos, Serra de Pradas, Trepat, beautiful Rosé Trepat, yeah, and Plada Ponent, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and, and Charello. Uh, which uh, these are uh, fresh news from from you. That's uh, from our committee uh, of, of people helping the the Cava appellation. Okay, so now let's try let's try and see if it works, because we are gonna leave uh, uh, and experience the first Master of Catalan Wine Wine Tournament. Yeah, uh, you can if you want to scan this. QR code, you can scan this QR code and, uh, and I'm here with you. We have 46 now players, yeah? I'm, I'm, and now we'll see if uh, you have follow uh, all this conversation or uh, if you don't get it right, it's my fault. Don't be, don't worry. Uh, now we are like 70, 77 people in and wow, that's going to be a huge, huge, huge uh, uh, contest here. Um, okay, more. Okay. Some people laughing. Yeah, some people surprised. Many happy people here. Okay, now I'm going to ask you to Put your name. Uh, so you are all using the, the phone. Eh? Okay, you are all using the phone. See, you can, of course, that, that's gonna work like this. Uh, let me let me let me go with it. Yeah, one second, one second. Relax, relax. Okay, so that, that will be two rounds, two rounds, four questions each. Okay, and you need to get it right. But you get it. Uh, you need to get it right 
and quick. Okay, so that that's also a bit of time pressure. Yeah, so 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 the quicker the quicker you get the answer, the more points you have, guys. The guys, because I see some Catalan friends uh, here with us today. You are not playing. Eh? That's international competition. Uh, the international competition means that Catalan people we cannot play, right? <laughs> no, do whatever you want. Uh, and okay, we are around one hundred people in. That's great. Okay. And let me try to put it this way. Uh, okay, let me share the screen so you see now the competition. Okay, right. So now it's time to put your name or nickname. We don't need an official name. Nickname also work for us. And then you need to select your avatar. Yeah, I'm gonna say Catalan master. It's me. <laughs> I'm not playing, by the way. Catalan master. Okay. And then go and join the game. Okay. Excellent. 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 We have people from Italy, Gianluca. Romaric, Nina, and Trepat. We have we have a gal, a guy or oh, oh, called Trepat. Uh, Ariel, PHI, Max. I see you all here. Are are we all ready? Yeah. Alex, Genegus, Bruno, Irina. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, so we are tw uh, ninety players. Ninety players now. Excellent. So let's start the quiz. Let's start the quiz. So first question. How many Catalan appellations are there currently today? How many of them are they today? Let's see. And then you, you need to press submit. Eh? You go very quickly to, and press uh, submit the answer. OK. Nine, eight, how many Catalan appellations are there today? See, two, one, time's up. Okay, okay, remember, excellent, excellent results. So the majority of us, uh, we said 12, most of them within the, the coast, but Pla del Bages and Costes del Segre, they are far inland, as well as Priorat and Conca de Barbera, uh, uh, but there are a total of 12, Appellations, very good, very good. Okay, question number two. Okay, so since when we know that vines have been grown and produced and wines have been produced in the territory uh, of Catalonia? Okay, that might be a bit difficult. I, and I don't know if I have said that in a very clear way, but the ancient the, the the most ancient remainings we have it's in Penedès, actually in Avignonet del del Penedès, uh, Iberian uh, era. Uh, that was difficult, but most of us we had it in a in a very uh, correct way. That's two thousand seven hundred years ago, more or less, that we have the first uh, uh, the first winery. Yeah, the first winery. Uh, with seeds, you know, with tartaric acid. So that's more or less it. Excellent. That's question number three. Be careful. There are many grapes variety. One, one of, of, there is one grape variety that is not considered a Catalan grape variety. You need to scroll down and submit your answer. You need to scroll down and submit your answer. Okay. Let's see. If you find the non-correct grape variety, the non-correct grape variety. Okay, three, two, one. Time's up. Okay, Godello, excellent. Yeah, Godello, Macabeo, Picapol, Charello, Garnacha Blanca, Trubat, which is, it was a bit tricky, but it's this new grape variety that we are starting to recover now from Costes del Segre. And then Cariñena Blanca, beautiful wines from Cariñeta Blanca. Excellent, eh? 
uh, very high in acids, super authentic and beautiful Cariñana Blanca wines today produced. Uh, and then the same, but with red grape varieties. There is one that is not in this group. There is one that is not considered a Catalan red grape variety. Also scroll select and scroll down. Yeah. So Garnacha Negra, Samso, Trapat, Ull de Llebre, Merenzao, Mandó, Pica Pol Negra. There is one that is not a Catalan red variety. And that's Time's up. Excellent. Merenzao. Merenzao is a, a, a grape from Galicia. It's related to Trousseau uh, from, from, from France. Uh, super interesting grape variety. Lovely, delicate wines from Merenzao, but not from Catalonia, but from Galicia. So let's start uh, and see how that is working. Vino Toker, uh, Trepat, and Roger. Okay. These are the number one, two, and three, but Rob, Luke, and you are following, and that's still not finished. Question number five. Question number five. That's easy, guys. Easy. We've been through that. One third of the world's Garnacha Blanca vineyards are planted in Terra Alta, Priorat, Empordà, or Tarragona. Terra Alta, Priorat, Empordà o Tarragona. That's easy. And actually, I'm visiting the region tomorrow. Uh, they do this wine fair in Batea uh, wine festival. I'm, I'm going to do a very good, very good uh, Terra Alta, Terra Alta, far in line. Terra Alta, actually, Terra Alta is not far in terms of a style to, 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 to Prior Alta. Honestly speaking. It's not so far away uh, compared to 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 Priorat. It's twenty minutes driving. Of course, there are not uh, as late soil. There are panal soils, another style of or kind of soil, but very nice red garnachas and very nice cariñenas. A bit lighter. The wines are lighter, less less alcohol, but a uh, 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 region that I really think it will rock in in the future. Oh, oh, it's already here in, in in Catalan restaurants. It's already very important. 60% 60 60 of the vineyards are old. 70% of the vineyards are very, very old. So there is a wine region in Catalonia, yeah, a wine region in Catalonia oh, that has at least 7% of really old vines. And as you know, the older, the better, not always. A, a, young, a young vineyard can be also giving, providing lovely fruit, but old vines are normally giving great results so that's lovely and for that excellent and for that so next to the french border uh this area that it's really similar in terms of style and concept to roussillon beautiful wines from garnacha and, and, and cariñenas also yeah don't cry there is miguel crying no no don't cry uh question seven there is uh, a, a classification of heroic viticulture within Spain and within Europe, actually. And Catalan, we are quite happy of having lots of hectares under this classification. So how many hectares in Catalonia are classified in the prestigious heroic viticulture mansion? How many? It's quite crazy. You will be surprised for sure. It's 6,000, 6,600. It's a lot. It's really crazy. So don't think that Catalonia is just Barcelona or Tarragona, sand and beaches. There are also very difficult vineyards to be cultivated here. And last, and now, there is a, an appellation which produces lots of uh, bien rancis mistela soli serena which is aging the wine under under the direct sun normally in demijons bean blancs which is a specific kind of uh, of sweet uh, white wine uh, uh, there is a, a 
at this appellation, uh, Tarragona, Conca de Barberà, Costa del Segre, Catalunya. We can also say probably Priorat uh, and Empordà, but they are not to be selected. So one of those, which is Tarragona, very good, very good. Okay, okay, so guys, very good, very well played. Now, let me check. I'm going to do my calculations uh, and see if I can find out who is the winner. Okay. And here we have Trepat, it's the winner. Okay, no, guys, no, 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 serious, serious speaking, Mira. Trepat, you cannot win because you are Catalan. Luc, Lucas Paya. I recognize you, uh, Catalan also. So actually, to be really honest with you all, and Rob and Ruka, yeah, no, Trepat and, and, and Luke, of course, I was expecting you to be uh, in this position. Congratulations to you all, to you all. Uh, Trepat, I will get wait for you in my Instagram account. So I don't know who you are, but we need to celebrate that so we can do a, a direct chat if you want uh, tomorrow or, or whenever you, you want. Luke, very good. Thank you for joining. Uh, and, and all the rest, very well played. Very, very well played. Thank you very much, Ron. That was fantastic. What a, it was a great uh, way of finishing your presentation. Very interesting presentation, by the way. I really learned quite a lot of stuff here. We have uh, a lot of questions. Unfortunately, we're not going to have a lot of time because we are running late. But I want to, to ask a couple of questions, at least, that I find quite interesting, if you can, if, if you can answer mm -hmm. for, for us. So Alexander is asking, how might climate change affect this region? Mm -hmm. And what is the local industry doing in, respond, in response to this? Obviously, that is, can have a long answer. So if you can summarize a few points, if you, if you, if you know. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very good question. Uh, and and it's, it's crazy. Actually, uh, two weeks ago, I was visiting uh, Aleja. Uh, and, and the plants, they were doing the, 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 the break, but crazy. Yeah, you know, the, the, the plant was supposed to be resting. But they, they are crazy today. Yeah. So uh, in Aleja this year and some areas in, in Penedes, uh, I think the, the, the quantity of, of the harvest will be much lower because of this other uh, uh, break bad that, that happened two weeks ago. It's crazy. And, and most of, most of um, uh, the people, we are actually, all of us, we are very concerned and very worried about, about this climate crisis. Uh, research has been has been done. I don't see some 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 people say that okay we'll go to the mountains, but I don't see all the all the uh, hectares now moving to the Pyrenees, which that would be very crazy, and there is not enough uh, land for 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 that. So the research is 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 it's very important, yeah, uh, and trying to find new grape varieties. We've seen some of those new grape varieties that are well adapting, not just in Catalonia, but Castilla-La Mancha, for instance, or Castilla-Leon, they are also researching with new new, new grapes variety. We have a, a, also hybrids, uh, uh, we're doing some researches uh, with a project called Briac, Briac project, uh, uh, which in my sound a bit crazy, but but hybrids can be also a good answer to to climate change. But it's it's a very worrying worrying um, yeah, a moment uh, to to now with with all this climatic crisis. So, yes, that is a difficult situation. I can say. Uh, uh, just let me just highlight another question here. Uh, probably easier to respond. Uh, Claire is asking: Does pick up all bear any relation with? Pick Pool the peanuts. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> I promise. No, 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 because yeah, uh, I was writing an article about that, uh, and it's not related to to people. I think it's actually claret from uh, if if I'm not wrong, but it's it's another great variety from Southern Rhone. Uh, I I would bet it's claret or one of those which is also accepted for for Chateau Coupap, but it's not people at all. Okay. Fantastic. And I think uh, probably the last question, because there are quite a lot of questions uh, that I don't think we have the time to, to, to answer. But um, uh, how many Vino de Pago are there currently in Catalonia? 
Uh, ¿Vi de finca cualificada? O vino I de pago. Think probably Mark refers to that, yes. Vi, vino de pago, there are none. No, 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 no vino de pago. Vino de pago, they are just in Valencia, uh, Castilla-La Mancha and Navarra today. Okay. Vino de pago, they are just in, in, in there. Uh, Vince de finca cualificada, there are 14. But actually, and, and I have the opportunity to say so, you, you know that the uh, pyramid of, of quality wines in, in Spain that we normally place vino de pago on the really top. Uh, it doesn't work like this. Okay, vino de pago is not, I mean, it, it should be next to denominación de origen. It, it's not better than, than a normal uh, appellation wine. I don't know why we have set this pyramid with the vino de pago on the top, but um, it, 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 we, we really don't feel it like this, no, not in terms of value or, or, or prestige. It should be next to a, a normal uh, appellation. So I don't think vino de pago is something that is extremely superior to some of the other Appalachian wines. That's, uh, that's very good. Thank you. So I think uh, we are going to finish uh, now the session. We are running six minutes late. So thank you, Ferran, for My the pleasure. presentation. Thank you, Alba, for coming as well. And thank you, everybody, who has joined our webinar today. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we hope to see you soon again. Excellent. And keep, keep studying, keep working for the diploma, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Bye bye. Ciao. Bye bye. <laughs>